Good afternoon, Mark, and welcome to Business Spotlight Interview. I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thank you, Colin. I appreciate being on today. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So maybe just to get started for our, our, our audience, uh, Mark, just tell us a little bit about yourself, the business that you own, how long you've been in business, et cetera. So uh, currently on uh, Lean Applications, it's actually a consulting company for companies that need to eliminate waste, which I think is pretty much all the companies that I know of. Uh, but Lean Applications, I've worked there almost nine years, and we it's just myself, but I go and consult companies all over the globe, actually, uh, to improve their efficiencies and to improve their flow and to really eliminate waste in their in their companies. So I'm a Georgia boy, as you can hear from my accent. I have a Southern accent. So I've always lived in Georgia, but my first job right out of Georgia Tech was TDK Electronics. And TDK made blank videotapes. You probably remember the v VHS videotapes, but we actually made 5 million a month in Peachtree City, Georgia. And actually in my twenties, being with the Japanese, I, I was able to go and see uh, Japan, many trips and study with the Japanese that so really helped set a great foundation for my success. So 11 years with them. And then I became a plant manager there at TDK. Uh, after that, I actually ended up with Respironics Phillips as director of operations for uh, Respironics Phillips, where we made medical devices. And that was, uh, we actually took five plants in North Atlanta at Healthdyne and made one plant off Chastain Road in Respironics. So that was a great uh, adventure there, but we would make oxygen concentrators and we actually set up lean manufacturing in there and became very efficient in what we were doing at Respironics Phillips. They actually had me go and do uh, set up global sourcing for Respironics. So I went and actually uh, organized the corporate group for purchasing. After that, they want, I said, I don't want to really move to Pittsburgh, so let me do supplier development. So I started doing the Honda 13-week program where I'd go to suppliers and teach them efficiencies. Uh, when we got done with that, uh, they put me as director of operations for asthma and allergy. So I had a plant in China and a plant in the UK, and I lived in Georgia, and my office was in New Jersey. So that was quite a lot of travel, but uh, I enjoyed it. I ended up creating the Mini Elite Nebulizer from from a supplier that we work with. It's the first uh, lithium battery nebulizer. Uh, then I saw a job in Georgia called uh, at Acuity Brands Lighting, Lithonia Lighting, and I became the Vice President of Operational Excellence and, and uh, Supplier Development at Acuity. Uh, so 29 plants, many distribution centers. So we implemented lean in the office and lean in the plant floors. And so I was, continuing to travel, but I loved it. Um, then left there after seven years and started my own company, Lean Applications. So I've worked with uh, companies that you probably know, Vitamix, Chick-fil-A, Bath Fitter. Um, I've worked with probably over 50 different companies all, all over the world, actually. And I love it. So, uh, you know, I know that it's about the people. And so that's what I love about Lean Applications is really going and helping people uh, do a better job and helping them with their jobs. Well, that, what a what a great intro. At, uh, and you've taken a lifetime of experience um, in, in lean efficiency and applied it to your own business. That's that's awesome. I, I have a little bit of background in, in lean manufacturing myself, and I love what you said about how it applies to more than just manufacturing um, and how it applies to the office and basically any business and any, any way of life, really. It's just it's principles that adapt to to many, many different businesses. That's awesome. And yes, I have heard of TDK. I bought many cassettes back in the day. Uh, <laughs> and I probably was similar vintage. So uh, but with that, without, that goes without saying that uh, I bought many of those. So that's pretty cool. So maybe to get started, first question for you, uh, you know, you've traveled the globe, you worked with many, many companies, many different um, different roles, now your own business. So when when you think about, you know, success, who, who's the first person that comes to mind and why? This is a different answer probably, but it, it's my parents. I was adopted at three days old and my mother was 49 and my father was 59 when I was adopted at three days old. She was one of the first managers for the Atlanta Gaslight Company. 
and very strong lady. I loved that, you know, and uh, my father was a salesman and actually had 11 rental houses. They were very financially stable and then taking on this baby in, in their later age it was a pretty good success story, I think. And uh, it's it's very exciting for me. And when I think of success, I think of them because they were very good with their money and their resources. And they uh, were excellent in helping me uh, learn morals and respect for others and, and things like that. That's real. That That's who I would respect and that I think of that is that's very successful. That's, that's, that's an excellent answer. Um, so you, you've been employed by numerous companies. You've uh, consulted many, many companies and now you own your own business, um, kind of harvesting the lessons of all that. So. What, as a business owner, what would you say has been some of the biggest learnings that you had along the, the ownership journey? So if you teach people to change, you better change yourself. I think that's one of the key learnings that I've had because COVID made everybody change. So uh, even during COVID, I was able to take on the virtual world and do some teaching there for Georgia Tech as well as uh, Lean Core and others in Lean Six Sigma. But I ended up actually changing my dynamic after eight years of consulting on my own. I became the global director of operational excellence for Kohler for about a year. And so during during COVID, I actually took that role on as well. And so I think if you're a leader, you got to change just like the folks you're preaching to that, that need to change. And I think that's one of the key key aspects. The other another one that I would suggest would be engage people. So you can go in and audit someone's area and it, it can be like, here comes the police. We better hide everything. So I found ways of, of engaging people and I call it a rattlesnake hunt. So we actually take teams and we go find things that might bite us like safety issues and quality issues and, and um, things that are not organized. And, the three teams the first day would train them what to look for and they go out and find things and end up uh, coming back with a hundred per team. So we'll have 300 pictures on the wall in the conference room after day one. We'll judge the biggest rattlesnake, the most rattlesnakes. And then the next two days, those teams have to kill 80%, which is fix the problem and take the after picture and put it up there. That's a lot of fun and uh, it creates pull and people. You know, it's not a push away. You know, this is another policeman coming in to, you know, I love the police, but it, it's kind of feels that, you know, I'm not going to say anything until I'm asked kind of approach. But if you if you engage the people and make it fun, then it turns the whole tide on the culture of the company. Yeah, that's you hit a lot of key sort of cultural elements for many businesses as well, right? As far as engaging, having fun, commitment, follow through, there's a lot of word to use there that are, are good lessons, um, some sage advice for, for company profile in general and how to engage people. That's, that's, that's really good. Um, so I think you said four years, um, lean applications has been around. Is that right? Uh, no, we did. I did eight years and then I, I had that one year at Kohler and now I'm back on into the ninth year. So I got you. Okay. So nine years old with a little bit of a sabbatical in the middle there. So if you look out in the next five years, um, you know, Mark, uh, for, for lean applications, what's the, you know, what, what's the vision for the next five years for the company? Definitely. It's, it's opened up. I, I see um, I've gotten a lot of the clients back as well. And I'm almost, I still have a few weeks uh, that I'm, I'm filling up, but if, if I look five years out, I would say, um, Several people want to join my company, and if, if I have enough business, I would definitely expand that way and teach. Uh, I'm really enjoying uh, getting to know different companies. I went to learn how to do um, propane tanks for tractor trailers last week. This week, it was um, actually doing an AME enterprise assessment at, at, at Tejing Motors up in North Carolina. Every week's different for me, and that really keeps it fresh, and I, that's what I like about it, you know. I'm still uh, in my 50s, so I got plenty of time to expand the business and continue to grow, and, I, and I'm working on my second book. My first book is Southern Sensei, and it's at Amazon, and I'm working on my second book, so I can see that 
completing. I think my second book title is going to be uh, Drama is the Ninth Waste because I don't know a company in the U.S. that doesn't have drama included in it. So, but you know, I'm enjoying it, and and that's part of what you got to do in 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 a company you enjoy. Excellent. Yeah, fantastic. Um, sounds like you've got some great um, insights that can propel your your company forward. Um, so as you know, I, I own a business coaching firm um, here in, in Noonan. And so I have to always ask this question, who, who would you consider um, to be personal professional looking back? Who's been your, your biggest, uh, maybe best coach in life and, and why? Definitely Mr. Nakamura was one of my biggest, best coaches. He was the plant manager at TDK. And he taught us as leaders to always look around and not straight ahead. And he would always find the question you didn't know in the Friday management meeting. And so it really made you good at trying to figure out what he's going to ask before you get in that meeting every Friday. So he really developed me in a way that, you know, was different, but it was a really good way to coach someone. Uh, it's, it's the best teachers and coaches are the ones that ask the best questions, not really the ones that give the best answers. And I think I really reflect on Mr. Nakamura for doing that for me. Oh, perfect. That's a great, great response. And I, I totally agree with your or concur with your comment about questions, right? That's that's how we that's how we draw things out of people and, and get those nuggets of wisdom. So really cool. Um, so as I said earlier, I think you and I are probably similar vintage. Um, so if you could go back to your 18 year old self um, and give that 18 year old self a bit of, of wisdom or knowledge to, you know, maybe change direction more positively, um, uh, impact your outcome or minimize pain, whatever you think. But what would the advice to your 18 year old self look like today? Wow, that's a great question. I think when I reflect back at my 18 year old self, I was working on graveyard shift during, between high school and college uh, on, at Bandag Tire Retread in Griffin, Georgia. And I remember pulling that hot rubber out of those presses and laying in the floor with cramps in both legs because I was sweating so much. And I'm like, I got to do something different than this. Uh, and so it encouraged me to go to Georgia Tech. And, you know, that was that was a real reflecting point for me because why are companies allowing others to to have pain and things we need to really have a really safe environment and to do those things so I was fortunate enough to really work hard even in my teens and, and 20s and I think that's what I would recommend others is the more you absorb the more you'll have the feedback later and as we get older we we're sponges that are full of knowledge you got to squeeze that sponge back out to others to really help them. And that makes you better so you can absorb more. You know, even technology, I think, would be another thing that I would really tell people to get involved in from 18 to now 56. Wow, what a change in technology. And where, you know, I'm having to learn so many things and it's been great. But we didn't have 3D printers back then. We didn't have um, even cell phones back then. So I think the more technology you can absorb at 18, the better you'll become. But you got to use that knowledge. You can't just sit in a chair and learn it. you got to apply it out on the floor and really go out and learn what people need to apply that technology. I think that's the key. A lot of people want to solve problems in their own office. You can't do that. you got to go to the plant floor and solve their pro help them solve their problems with technology and other digital trends and management and things like that but i would go to the floor more and really uh they're the experts they do it every day you got to tap into those people another great response uh as you were talking there were so many things that popped into mind but i mean um you know you talked about education and learning and we have a saying that you really can't out earn your learning right and uh you just got to continue to adapt and learn and especially now with the speed of change, you know, and the sort of, um, you know, rapid acceleration of, of, of global knowledge uh, and technology, keeping up with that and keeping ahead of it in some cases is, is the key. So excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess la last question for you, um, just uh, so the, the, the viewers um, can know how to get a, get a hold of you, Mark. So any 
Uh, I guess any plug here you want to make for websites, phone numbers, offers, newsletters, anything that a way that our readers and our, our viewers can engage with lean applications. Thank you, Colin. So my website is um, lean APPL, www.leanappl.com. But my, I like to connect with people on LinkedIn. I, and, and please connect with me on LinkedIn, Mark Preston. I also have a weekly newsletter that I'm doing uh, through Lean App, well, through Mark Preston. You can find it there. So please join my weekly newsletter. It's about a two minute, two to four minute read every every week. And I have a lot of fun with it. You know, when I look at, you got to have some fun in the job. My Southern Sensei has a Southern saying for every chapter. Waste is like kudzu. You can never stop killing it. Uh, don't get between a dog and a fire hydrant. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fun. Uh, this week, uh, actually, I'm about to publish, uh, you know, don't be a mule with blinders on. You got to learn to see the big picture, right? And so a lot of times we're looking through uh, with that with blinders on in our departments. But are you value stream mapping? Are you looking at the big picture? So I, I'm having fun. It's sharing my creativity with my Lena uh, newsletter. And my daughter actually is my editor. She's uh, she's about to go to law school, just finished at Auburn. But uh, and also, since yesterday was Memorial Day, a big shout out to my son. He just finished as a Calvary Scout. He's about to go to uh, Washington State as a uh, Calvary Scout at Fort Lewis. And so he leaves next week for that. So big shout out to all the veterans and all the active military uh, from from Memorial Day. Well said, Mark. I, I appreciate that. It sounds like you've left a great legacy in your family and the businesses that you're <clears throat> supporting and, and engaging with. So thanks for that. Thank you very much, Colin. I've, I've enjoyed this. All right. Have a good day. Take care. Thank you.